Good day and welcome to the Herbert and Art Show. We have with us the uh, CEO of Coliseum Health System, Alan Golson. Welcome. Yeah. Well, thank you, Herbert. I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. How long have you been over at the Coliseum Hospital? Well, I've been with Coliseum for just over two years now. And you're from where? Well, I'm originally from Alabama, but I spent uh, the past 10 years as the CEO of Palmyra Medical Centers in Albany, Georgia. What prepared you to be um, over a, a major hospital? Well, being in healthcare is something I've wanted to do really my whole life, ever since I was a young corpsman in the Navy when I was 18 years old. So in college, I majored in healthcare administration and actually started out as a purchasing agent in a hospital. Went back to school at night, got my master's, and once I did that, kind of worked my way through the system as an assistant administrator to COO and, and now to a CEO in Albany and fortunate enough to come here. You know, welcome to Macon. Well, thank you. Kind of late, but we're glad you're here. Well, I appreciate it. We've really enjoyed Macon. It's a, it's a nice town. People are very friendly, and we've been made to feel at home here. You have a heart program now at the hospital. I think it's five years old. Tell us something about it. Well, we did. We really, we've been in the cardiac cath business for quite some time. Uh, but about five years ago, we were able to expand and have an open heart program. And I tell you, it's, it's grown dramatically. Uh, we've seen an increase of almost 42% growth in our cardiac care program. And then our heart program has gone from really about 100 cases the first year to close to 230 last year. So we're growing at a very good rate. You guys use basically the same doctors that's all over making medical center use, some Coliseum. They're the same doctors working at both hospitals most that, of the time. Is that that, right? That's correct. And uh, most of the physicians are on staff at both facilities. And what's helped us in a lot of that growth, too, is when we've done a good job and get rid of exclusive contracts in this part of the state. So now, with the doctors being able to choose, patients and their doctors now choose where they go as opposed to an insurance company choosing, which we think is the way it ought to be. You have a state of the art. Uh, cath lab? Well, well, we actually have two state-of-the-art cath labs. Um, one of the things that we do, kind of the philosophy of HCA, quite honestly, is as we invest in technology, we're going to get the absolute best that we can find. Um, we have a contract with GE that we've been in partnership with for a number of years now. And so as we go to, to expand and buy new equipment, we you know, have a, such a good relationship with them. We know what's out there, and we're able to come in and produce it. And again, that's what you know, allows patients uh, they want to choose us. They know that when they come here, it's going to be the best that they, that's available. What are you doing for patient safety? That's a problem and a concern for consumers all over the country. You know, patient safety is it's actually one of the number one goals. And, and I kind of have to go back to, to remind everybody, HCA was actually founded by two physicians. And so patient first has been a philosophy of our company since the inception. But when you look at patient safety, one of the things that we've done most recently is a, is a barcoding system. So when a patient comes into the hospital, we actually put a barcode wristband on that's got, along the, on that code, we can access their medical record. We can look at their drug uh, use, their drug history of medications that they're on. We can look at any allergies or anything else. So that when they receive their medicines, for instance, they can go in, the nurse can scan their armband, then they scan the, the, uh, the medications to make sure they match. Because what we're trying to do is we want to make sure we have the right patient with the right medicine, with the right dose, and then give it to them at the right time. And by doing all this, we can coordinate, and it keeps us from having uh, any missed medications, but more importantly, making sure they get the right medicine and not someone else's. Are most hospitals doing something like that? Is this something new for it? Uh, Coliseum. Well, you know, a lot, a lot of hospitals really are moving towards uh, this type of, of patient safety items. Uh, HCA tends to be one of the, the leaders in this industry. You know, we're one of the largest, we are the largest actually uh, hospital corporation in the United States. So having hospitals in 26 different states, um, close to 180 hospitals across the nation, gives us an, somewhat of an advantage because we have access to, to those type resources. You are a for-profit hospital. Well, I like to think of it as we are a tax-paying hospital. A uh, tax-paying hospital. A tax-paying, because truly when you think about it, if you, were, if, if you didn't make a profit, you wouldn't be in, in business. Right. So when I look at these, I look at being either a for, uh, we look at being tax-paying or non-tax-paying. So yes, you know, we, not only are we a community hospital providing care, but we do pay property tax, sales tax, everything we buy, just like any other business or any other consumer, we pay tax on that. So you would buy, let's say, an MRI or something like that that might cost a million more dollars. You pay sales tax on it. We'll pay 7% sales tax. Uh, Although it's for medical reasons, I guess. It, it really doesn't matter what it's for. Again, it's anything that we purchase, uh, we pay tax on. And another hospital in this area. 
And another hospital in this area, let's say like the medical center, if they bought the same item, they don't have to pay taxes on it. They, they pay no taxes on any items like that, <clears throat> be it you know, equipment, uh, property tax, sales tax, none of that. That's, that's interesting. Well, it, it, is, it is different. I mean, and again, when you look at, um, you know, how we're, we have our own, we have shareholders in essence. We're a privately held company at this point. Um, but it was, you know, the company, again, founded, you know, to have a choice. So we, we try not to be governmental in the way we run and it's, we're able to operate. But we make that commitment and that's part of being in this business. Mm -hmm. That brings up another question for me uh, at Coliseum Health. Uh, indigent care, what do you do for indigent care? Well, we provide, you know, our fair share of indigent care. We, we have a commitment with the state of Georgia that we say we will provide at least 3% of our adjusted gross revenues to, to indigent care, which we more than meet that requirement. Um, when we look at it, if a patient comes to our hospital, if they need care, it doesn't matter to us if they have a million dollars or if they don't have a nickel. We're gonna, we have one level of care, so we're going to do the best that we can for every patient that presents to us that we can do. Y you have to remember, doctors admit patients. And so the doctors on our staff, if he wants to admit a patient, we're, we're happy to take care of them. But the county, I notice every year during budget times that the county gives so much money to the medical center for indigent care. And this year, I, re I was reading the paper, they didn't give anything to the Coliseum Hospital. That's correct. Now, we did present, uh, we did go to the county and present our case. We felt like we had a good case. An indigent patient presenting to us is no different than an indigent uh, patient presenting there, and we felt like we should have gotten something proportionate to the level. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the, the county didn't agree with that. So.